How's it going, guys? Nathan, Nathan's DIY Garage, and today I'm going to talk with you about taking your BMW to a shop, or taking any car to a shop, for that matter. Uh, so I get a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, a lot of messages on YouTube um, with horror stories of people that live just about in every state. Some of the worst we found are people that live in California, Chicago, have good friends live there. That's another terrible place uh, as far as getting your car worked on, not getting screwed. What the problem is, we've gotten to a point in this world, or we've been to a point in this world for a little while, uh, where basically everybody wants to screw you. Now, I guess that's fine if you're rich. Uh, BMW is a mid-range car. Most people that own these cars are not rich. Uh, especially if you're buying a used BMW, you know, for twenty five hundred bucks or forty five hundred bucks or six thousand dollars, you know, you're not super super rich. So you're looking to keep the car on the road. It may or may not be your only car, may or may not be your daily, uh, but you're definitely looking to keep it on the road for a decent price. Okay, so just as a basis here, it's a little hard to explain without being in front of you and showing you some actual projects. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys that watch these videos have seen my other videos and seen we really saved a lot of money, uh, of course, by doing stuff for sales and by correctly shopping for stuff. So what we're going to start off with doing here, um, let's say you need, I would say brakes. So let's say your brakes are making some noise or even... You notice the lights on, you're getting a lot of black dust in your wheels, you want to change your brake pads. Start with this real quick, we won't spend much time on it, we'll go to the next. Uh, let's say it's a BMW, let's just say BMW E90. BMW E90, we're going to try to find how much it costs to do a brake job. Uh, front brakes shop costs. All right, it's cost to replace front brakes and rotors. Now, we're going to talk also about these forums, about Beamer Forums, Beamer Fest, E90Post.com, all those forums. They're a very great place for some stuff. They could also be your worst nightmare. And we're going to share that with you here just a little bit. So, the front brake pads, here's this guy says, $190 plus $80 labor. Okay? So, that would be a secondary shop. That would not be the dealer. Uh, he has a rotors of 226 and $45 labor, which is kind of funny because usually you do that same time you do the pads. So while they're charging you extra labor for that, I'm not really sure. Rear brake pads are $130 plus $80 labor, uh, $228. So basically the same price as the front as the rear, just a little bit cheaper on the pads. Uh, air cabin filter, that's a good one. $87.21 plus $39 labor on an E90. It's about a two minute job to replace that and you should not pay over $20 for that filter. Okay, so basically we're gonna go ahead and change it up a little bit. Let's say your fuel pump went out. Let's just go uh, BMW E39 fuel pump. All right, E39 fuel pump. Nope. Let's, let's go shop cost. Okay, E39 fuel pump shop cost uh, $540. It's all the same pump, $530, $530, $528. Doesn't make any difference. Also, all E46 is all the same pump. Uh, let's see here. And this will give you a basic idea of what you're looking at. For even have to call a shop, most of the shops are the same price. Uh, they all go by a manual. It doesn't matter if it takes them five minutes to replace a part or if it takes the two or three hours to shop. Manual tells them they're going to charge you the same price. Now, if you are located in inner city, uh, Chicago, Detroit, even St. Louis, where I live at, your cost is always going to be more in the city. Your best bet is to go out of the city, find a little shop, and get it done. Uh, your best bet is to make friends with somebody that knows how to work on stuff. If you cannot, most of you guys that watch my videos can do your basic stuff without no problem. Some of you guys or girls may not be able to do that. 
understand or maybe you just don't have a place to do that or even remotely be able to learn to do that. Uh, if that's the case, you need to buddy up with somebody that knows how to work on stuff, somebody that's doing stuff maybe on the side, at their home, you know, if they have a small shop, something they're not going to gouge you the full labor rate to do. But that being said, just like a shop or a dealer, those guys can mess it up just as much an individual. If the person is not paying attention, we see a lot of that. Even the dealerships, a lot of people have trouble paying attention to what they're doing. They get sidetracked. They don't do stuff correctly. They don't put bolts back in. They'll all deny that to no end. But that is a real situation that happens more than half of the time. You'd be totally shocked. And another part is misdiagnostics. Uh, misdiagnosing stuff and messing it up. This is not... Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so we just have some basic costs here for a BMW 540, which is an E39. A valve cover gasket, $39 to $172. Why, I guess is the question I got to ask on that. A valve cover gasket uh, for 540. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, let's say you just get reckless and you spend 30 bucks on a set of them. Okay, $172 for parts. You got to be criminally insane to pay that. Uh, the labor $316, $172. I could see a shop if you're really slow and you're charging by the book plus a little bit because you're a little slow on the job, you can charge $172 for that job. That's not a difficult job, especially on E39. A little more difficult on a E53X5. Uh, average cost is $355 to $344 for valve cover gaskets. If I charge somebody to do that, I would probably be taken to court and sued. Uh, where I live at here. So, um, ABS wheel speed sensor replacement. ABS wheel speed sensor. Um, that so E39 would be the right rear. That reads the car's speed, so it tells the transmission when to shift. That is also doubles as the ABS sensor. Uh, when the car senses that that rear sensor or any of the sensors on any of the tires is going slower or faster, it throws on the ride stability, the traction control, Gets the car straightened back out. The wheel speed sensor replacement uh, for the parts is 226 to 280. I'm hoping that's all four of them. If that's for one, uh, definitely uh, don't need to go to that place. We were charging that. Uh, labor $44 to 280. Um, it's only a one bolt process. If you know how to do it, it'll take you longer to take the wheel off than it would to take the sensor out. Uh, E39, you got to watch out so the plugs are not bad. Be prepared for that. That's a pretty minor fix if they are. Average 270 to 560. I can't even imagine my wildest possible farce dreams charging somebody $560 to do four ABS wheel sensors. We're thinking it's four. It doesn't say it's four. Uh, that could be one. Uh, head gasket replacement. Most shops will not do that. If your BMW M52, M54... Uh, N52, N54, M62, N62, on and on and on and on. 99.9% .9 of shops will not do that job. $2,473, $1,194. That's total BS. No shop will dare touch it for that price. Maybe it's the old, old M52 cast iron block. They might do that. They'll probably mess up the timing on it. They get pissed at me whenever I say that. Uh, strut shock is over replacement for the front. Uh, the parts, <laughs> this is front only. The parts are 502 to 658. Let's see, 658. Even 502. What can you buy for $502 or four struts? That'll buy you all four struts with the springs already installed. That'll buy you brake pads and disc all around. And maybe a few little other things. Uh, maybe a lot of other things. Depends on where you buy them at. Uh, also, you guys, E39 guys, remember that the M package cars have different struts than the non-M. And the 540 has different than the 520, 523, 525, 528, and 530. Uh, next is catalytic converter replacement. Okay. Let me, before we go on to this. You could buy catalytic converters off eBay right now for $30 to $60 for anything you could possibly want it for, period. Catalytic converters are dirt cheap. 
Um, they damn near give them away at this point. Uh, calorie converter replacement, $1,404 to $3,498. If you pay somebody $1,404 or $3,498 to replace a catalytic converter, you need to have your head examined. There must be clearly something wrong with you. Uh, so labor, $237. That wasn't even the labor. That was just a cost of the part. Uh, labor, $237 to $3,400. Uh, average, 1641 to $6,996. If you're paying somebody $7,000 to replace two or four catalytic converters, you know, you could just come over here. I'll, just, I'll do it for $6,000. You know <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm totally joking. Uh, radio hose replacement, 88 to 123. Uh, it doesn't say if it's one or two radiator hoses. It had to be literally five of them for that price. 193 to 246. So when we had the 135i here, uh, Mike is 135i. We did, I don't know, we did pump, we did water pump, we did a bunch of hoses, we did uh, pulled the intake manifold off to do the oil filter housing stuff. We took all the braces off under the car. I don't even remember. We took the whole dash out. We fixed the heater core. I don't even remember what all we did. We had like 30 or 40 hours and I charged him 600 bucks. I felt bad about charging the guy 600 bucks to do that because, you know, I don't know. Uh, I think he had a few hundred dollars in parts in that thing. He probably had $900 in that fix. Now that N54 should run for a very long time. Uh, so let me say that's pretty much all on that. We're going to get the heck off of this. We're burning too much time on it. I don't want this video to be three hours long. Uh, Facebook groups and forums. We touched on that a little bit. Facebook groups and forums. Uh, watch the Facebook groups. Those are mostly ran by dealer guys from the dealership. They're run by BMW. They call them indie shops. Uh, indie shop is a fancy name for we're going to charge you a bunch of money working your BMW. We may or may not know shit about it. Um, be careful of those guys. But there are some good guys on the Facebook groups. If I dare, actually, I got kicked off our local Facebook group. Because the dealer, the guy who works at the dealer, kicked me off of it. Um, guy got on there, wanted an M52 head gasket job done. I told him I'd do it for 500 bucks to go to St. Louis and get it, which is an hour away. Bring it here, do the gasket, do it all, parts and everything, 500 bucks. They told me to get off the site and kick me off. <laughs> so uh, shops don't like you undercutting them. Beware of that. Uh, let me see here. So. Pretty much the scenario on the shops are 95, that's being very conservative, 95% uh, of the shops are out to turn a profit and a profit only. They could give a absolute shit less about you or how much money you got or anything like that. They're there to charge, charge, charge. Now, it's the 5% that are not out to do that and are actually good people uh, have gotten a bad name because of everybody else gouging everybody. Uh, so basically, let's see where we're at here. We already covered touch a little bit. Get the hell out of the inner city to find a shop. Do not pay inner city prices to get your car fixed. If it's having problems, get it fixed before it breaks down so you're not stuck uh, having somebody fix it wherever you're at. If you're in California, just move. You're never going to get a good deal on anything in California. You need to make eight times the money to live there. That situation is coming to a snapping point. It already is. Many, many friends live in California. Um, you know, here in Missouri, you can live comfortably on thirty thousand a year. In California, especially in the city, I don't know if you can live on a hundred a year. I really don't think you can. Um, so let me see. Learn how to fix your own cars next on the list. Get out. Do your research. Fix your own car. That's the best way to do anything. You may not have a place to do that. To do small, simple stuff. You don't need a place to do that. Uh, you can literally do that in the parking garage of your apartment. The small, piddly stuff. Little things to keep your car running. Uh, find BMW friends that help you work on your car. We already touched on that a little bit. Those are good friends to have. Uh, next on the list. I had to write a list out because I get sidetracked and go way off on left field on other stuff and don't get the video done I want to get done. 
Uh, doesn't matter what kind of car you own, it's still expensive. If you're paying a shop, it is. Uh, right now, the way I do it, BMW is one of the cheaper cars to own. Um, once you, if you fix it correctly, they can last, you know, 300 plus thousand miles. The transmissions are not rickety if you treat them right and you change the fluid. Don't pay any attention to that lifetime fluid. That is not correct. 40, 50,000 miles goes by on any BMW that's automatic transmission. Change that fluid. Uh, let me see here. Buy parts from eBay and Amazon, Pelican, or FPC Euro. So Pelican Parts is a little, oh, it's a little site. I use them a little bit. Uh, PelicanParts.com, they do a lot of Porsche stuff, and I was in Porsches real heavy, I buy a lot from them. They would have some OEM grade stuff that you couldn't find anywhere else. They sell also BMW stuff, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen, Saab, Volvo, and Mini Cooper. We have bought some Mini Cooper stuff, uh, some R56 parts. Pelican Parts can be great, they could also be wickedly expensive, so be careful of that. Uh, I would say the next would be FPC Euro. Our friend Sylvester that lives in Chicago uses these these people a lot. They're overall pretty good. He's had really good luck with buying pulleys, OEM pulleys, thermostats, stuff like that with them. Uh, I don't think he got headlights in the team. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, good site for that. Haven't heard anything bad about them. We went to buy a, or he went to buy a mass airflow sensor for his 318 M44 engine, and they wanted $400 for it, so that didn't work. Uh, other than that, there is a few other smaller sites. Let's do eBay. eBay is always going to be the cheapest. The thing about eBay is you have to know how to search eBay. Um, let's do. We just bought some control arms. I didn't buy them. The customer bought them for uh, John's green E39. We just got a whole set. This is a set that we bought. You're not going to find $122 control arms. Actually, I think the ones he got were $112 or $117. Uh, you're not going to find those anywhere. FPC Euro. They're going to stick it in your ass and break it off on control arms. Stuff like that you cannot buy through there eBay has made in China stuff. eBay also has, you know, name brand stuff. They have OEM. There's no reason to buy OEM for a BMW because they always go out for 100,000 miles anyway. These you need to do about every 100,000 miles if you aren't driving on really rough roads. If you live in, again, Chicago, cities with extremely rough roads in the north and the rust belt, you will have to do those before 100,000 miles. Uh, this guy does a lot of good stuff. German part saver. We buy a lot from him. Uh, all his stuff has always been really good. There are just literally millions of parts on here. Amazon. We buy some off Amazon, but Amazon has some dirty little tricks. It's really hard to judge. Well, let me spell it right. arm. Amazon is kind of hard to judge how much the price is sometimes. Like this one says free shipping. You get a watch on Amazon. They will get you on a handling fee sometimes. Um, Amazon has passed a law in Missouri. Now Missouri residents have to pay sales tax. That's going to drive so much, so much business away from Amazon by doing that crap. Especially when eBay is not doing that. Uh, so yeah, just tons and tons of stuff. Here's a whole kit for $135, free shipping. You won't know until it has the handling fees, so you click it all the way through. Most of you guys know how to use Amazon. That's not a problem. That's pretty much it. The video is getting to be too long. I go on this subject for days and days and days. The biggest thing is, guys, if you think you're overpaying, you probably are. Don't get screwed. Stand up for yourself when you go to the shop. That'll piss them off. They'll probably tell you to leave. If they do, go somewhere else. Don't be scared of them, guys. Stand up to them. Fight for the price that you want to pay and get it done. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.